Well, hello everybody. It is day 45 of my carnivore adventure. And what do we have to report today? Um, pretty good sleep last night. I'll just get the basics out of the way. And got basically my steps in today. Diet was good. I haven't had a single tea all day. Um, Cause I'm trying to cut back on that and had a little chat about that last night but yeah really trying to cut back on the tea so i have had mostly water today i had a couple of coffees this morning and then literally i've had water all day um, i did have a peppermint tea but it doesn't have any oxalates in it so that's fine to have so i can totally have that i did have a few peanuts just um in the shell because i went to five guys and for lunch today but it wasn't very many but I did have a few so I had a, a few peanuts but not as many as normal and I haven't again had peanut butter in quite a while now so that's pretty good as well so I am getting better I so yes yeah, so I had a, a good lunch today water all day and then it's Valentine's Day so I made dinner for my wife and we had I got a big um, a kilo so two pounds of roast pork so i did some really nice roast pork with proper i finally got the crackling right for once so it's super super crispy and nice and soft with all the fat on it underneath so loads of good fat with with dinner tonight and had some proper pork it also means that i have leftovers now for tomorrow so that means i'll be able to have a good diet tomorrow even when i'm at work um i know it's not it's not the fattiest meat in the world and it's the, especially these cuts are a little bit lean but it's okay um the plan is i have some of that country sausage as well so i may try and get up in the morning and make myself some of that before i go in and that'll be quite fatty as well and some eggs and i think i was thinking about this and people talk a lot about fat but i get a lot of fat from eggs and i do eat i eat about four eggs a day at the minute sometimes five so i'm getting quite a bit of fat i think from from that as well but also a decent amount of protein and what was the other thing um i can't remember somebody was talking in the comments about something that i wanted to comment on tonight so pardon me the video is going to get a bit funny here for a second because it's going to go a bit dark but I can't remember which video it was on. Let me just have a quick look. I don't know if it was yesterday. Um, sorry, talk amongst yourselves. I know it's boring. Um, don't see it in there. I can't remember what it was. Let me see. Let me just look. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, oh, yeah, that was it. Um, GJ Jank. Don't know. Anyway, somebody commented on day 44 and they talked about plants trying to kill you and pesticides were doing the rest. And I put a comment in there that I had some thoughts I wanted to talk about. One of the things, so I have a thought about, in particular, the American diet. Because America is really different than a lot of places in the rest of the world when it comes to food. Like, for example, I went back to see my mom a couple of years ago and had to stay for like six weeks. And in six weeks, I gained 15 pounds. Now, that's insane because... I wasn't really eating any differently. I was certainly wasn't eating any more calories than I normally did. And I was running 5K every day. Um, it was just, it, it's a difference in the food that you get in the stores in the US versus the food that you get in the stores in Europe and in the UK. And we can talk about the Europe and UK that's a whole nother argument we can have. But for arguments purposes, for most of the time, the UK was in the EU and was basically part of that whole food chain. Um, the quality of the food that we get here 
is much higher, I think, than the quality of the food that we get in America. I mean, I remember I went back about 10 years ago and a friend of mine and I were together and we, we were like, okay, we're going to go get some chicken. We're going to grill out and, you know, have a barbecue in the backyard and blah, blah, blah. And we went to, I can't remember what store it was. It might've been a, might've been a Walmart grocery or something. I don't know, but literally the, the chicken breasts were like this big. That's not natural. Chicken breasts aren't supposed to be that big. Chickens are small. Chicken breasts are supposed to be small. And and it got me thinking, and he and I had a long chat about this as well. And, you know, we were talking about the food and it was quite tasteless and it wasn't very nice compared to what we get over here. I mean, that for example, the eggs that I get are from a farm down the road and literally you can drive by and they've got probably 15 acres, 20 acres of fields with the chickens running around outside. You can literally see the chickens outside roaming free. And so that's where the eggs and where the local chickens at the butcher come from. It's it's a totally different thing, but they're not these enormous chickens that are basically the size of a turkey breast almost. And I think that I have a theory. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor, but I do have a theory that I think that a lot of the a lot of the um, steroids and stuff that they're giving the animals to make them grow faster and to make them grow bigger so that they can produce more meat quicker. Um, I think that is filtering down through the food chain. And so I think in particular, it just seems like, and this is a criticism and people will probably jump all over me for this and that's fine, but it just seems like Americans are struggling with weight and everything else across the whole of society. It's like the average size of Americans has gone up, but it's, it's also, it's not just fat, but it's also bigger it's like actually physically bigger, taller. And I wonder if just this, there's a really steady low level of steroids that are coming through in all of the meat, all of the poultry, all of the pork. And that stuff is just very gradually just, you know, because it's, it's just constantly in the diet. And I suspect that, well, sorry, I'll take a step back. So that seems to run contrary to what people experience in the carnivore diet because they say well then I go on to eating only meat and then I lose weight yes but a lot of people particularly people that I see on here and a lot of people when they go to do in the carnivore diet they also go to a little bit higher quality meat so they go to grass-fed meat instead of the sort of industrial farmed meat and I suspect that that could be also part of the reason and if you mix other things in like if you're mixing in wild game like venison um, or something else like that or 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 um, I don't know elk or something I know Joe Reagan talks about elk all the time but that's because he hunts them but if you're mixing in other foods as well like those animals aren't farmed like beef is and so yeah I just I can't help but wonder if it's not just stuff coming from the grain and everything that the animals are fed. I know that there's a lot of genetically modified crops also that are legal in the U.S. that aren't legal in other places. Um, you know, wheat's been genetically modified over the years and years and years. It's It bears no resemblance to what wheat used to be like. And, you know, there are some countries, particularly in like France and Italy, who have some very, very strict rules about produce and about you know what chemicals can be used and those sorts of things i mean you've got companies you've got seed companies who are selling seeds that are sterile so they'll grow a plant but it can't grow seeds to plant another plant because they want the farmers to have to come to them to buy the seeds that's not natural whatever they've done to that plant is not natural and i just can't help but think that a lot of that contributes to the general shape that we're in at the minute, the, the whole world. But I'm just thinking particularly of the U.S. Um, anyway, it just came up in a comment and I know, I mean, I've been chatting for quite a while now. We're, yeah, oh, we're 10 minutes. That's not too bad. Um, but yeah, anyway, that just is something that was kind of, I had to think about this morning and it's a theory that I've had for a while. 
I'm sure someone will probably mention that there's been research that shows, you know, it's totally fine that that will be the beef industry will be putting out some sort of propaganda that says, nope, it's totally fine. Nothing ever gets passed through. But, you know, you have other studies that say, well, you know, fish are changing gender in the, you know, from from water where women are taking birth control. And, you know, that that stuff is flushing out of the system and it's going into the water and it's going into everything else. So. And I don't know if that's true either, but that's just some crap I've heard on the internet as well. So I have, again, don't at me. Um, but I think it, I don't know. I need to look into it more. This is one of the other parts of this journey that, you know, I did it like m probably most people do, which is I just got fed up with my, with the way I was. I had these pains and everything else. And I'd heard that this diet's like magical and that, you know, if I just eat meat and, and kind of, you know, a little bit of milk and some eggs that I'll start to feel better and my joint pain will go away and it'll be like this magic cure and I'll lose a bunch of weight. I didn't look into any of the science really of it. I don't know anything about oxalates. I don't know anything about any of the stuff that happens along the way. So that was part of why I wanted to, to do these videos, aside from the fact that I have this promise to myself that I'm going to do a video every day which that's going really well and it's doing exactly what I wanted to, to do with that and my video editing skills are getting much better, much, much quicker. Um, but I yeah, I just jumped into it and I just thought, well, we'll see how it goes. Now that I'm getting into it, I'm starting to think more about it. I'm having little symptoms or something come up here. I watch a video there and, you know, then I'm starting to dig into all this stuff and learn a little bit more. So Hopefully you guys like that. Um, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm just bumbling along like everybody else. I struggle like everybody else. I have good days. I have bad days. Some days I'm up, some days I'm down. My weight goes up, my weight goes down. Sometimes it stays the same. It's all the same shit that we all have, right? And I just wanted to put something out there that's a bit real and, and just share it with other people and Hopefully, if other people are having the same struggles that I am, that they can watch it and go, do you know what? I'm not the only one. And if I can help one person get along, then that's cool. Um, so, yeah. So let me know what you think about the theory. I mean, I can't, I don't know. I can't help but think that if you've, you're you loading up animals with loads of, you know, specialist feed that's been treated and you're giving them, you know, steroids to make them grow like 10 times faster than they're supposed to grow normally, that can't be healthy right? Like for humans, it just, it's not the way we're supposed to eat. And sometimes we don't have a choice. I totally get that. It's probably extremely difficult to get anything different in the U.S. Over here, it's a little bit easier, but that's because the European Union has been very strict about a lot of the food rules and regulations. In fact, once Brexit happened and the U.K. has been out of the EU, there has been a marked difference in the quality of things like produce that we've had. There used to be really strict rules about the shape and the size and kind of, you know, what produce had to look like and, and what it had to be like and what the quality was like. And frankly, the quality of all of that stuff has gone through the floor since Brexit. It took a little bit of time for that to happen, but now we're not we're not getting the nice, beautiful fruits and vegetables that we used to have. Everything's misshapen. It's dirty. Um, it's It's been really, it's been really interesting to kind of see even what's happened to the food. Um, but it is a lot easier to get locally sourced chicken and locally sourced venison and locally sourced, like, like where I live, there's tons that's not pheasant season at the minute, but when it's, when it's hunting season and there are pheasants everywhere, like you can get wild game all the time from the local butcher. You can get, like I said, the chickens that are from the farm down the road. You get the eggs. I mean, I can buy a couple of hundred meters away from my house on the farm across the way. There's a there's a farm that raises a very small flock of chickens. They probably have maybe a hundred and they sell just eggs in an honesty box out front. And I like I've talked to the guy and the lady who, you know, the farmers who were there when I've run past during COVID and stuff. I mean, it's I know where they are coming from and I know the kind of stuff that they're getting and I know those animals are out free roaming and I totally 100 appreciate that you know somebody who lives in Dallas or Austin or Memphis is it's really difficult to get 
you know, that level of access to kind of fresh foods and whatever. So it's not a criticism. It's just me thinking out loud. So um, anyway, that's my thought for the day. And I hope everybody out there is getting on well. And if you're on a diet, it's going well for you. Keep it up. Um, again, if you've got any comments, please leave them and um, I will get to them. I try and answer everybody, mainly because I'm anal retentive about keeping my comments box empty. So <laughs> I try to answer everybody, even if it's with an OK. Um, and yeah, and if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And if you know other people that are doing the diet and stuff like that, please share it with them. Um, just because it makes me feel good if I can grow my subscriber count. It makes it a little bit more fun for me. And, uh, and it adds a little bit of extra pressure for me to try and up my game and, and make better videos. So hopefully you're seeing an improvement over time. And today I actually remembered to turn my microphone on. So we got a little bit better sound than last night. And yeah, that's it for me for tonight. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.